In the last video, we looked at integrals that led to log functions. In those particular cases, we had some multiple of the derivative in the numerator and then the function in the denominator. Sometimes integrals that lead to log and reciprocal functions aren't always obvious to spot. In these particular cases, we can use partial fractions to split the integral and then deal with much simpler expressions. So let's look at an example of that. Let's take now the integral and we will have now 7 over the quantity and we'll take 2x minus 1 multiplied by the quantity 3x plus 2. We want to integrate this now with respect to x. Now if I look at this, I've got a quadratic in the denominator. Therefore, the numerator isn't a multiple of the derivative, as I should have a linear term. I would have some form of x in the numerator. Therefore, what we're going to do is use partial fractions to split this up. So using partial fractions, which I'm assuming you have an understanding of, 2x minus 1 multiplied now by 3x plus 2 in the denominator. We will now set up an identity, and I can write a over the quantity 2x minus 1, plus b over the quantity 3x plus 2. So if you're not familiar with partial fractions, please check out my site, as that is absolutely essential for this section of integration. OK, so rewriting, we're going to have now 7, then we will have a, we will have the 3x plus 2, and then we'll have plus b, and then we'll have now 2x minus 1. We can, of course, set x to be minus 2 thirds, and then x to be equal to positive one half, or we could solve a simultaneous equation. I'm just going to solve a simultaneous equation here, and we can see terms in x. So if we look at terms in x, we're going to have 3a plus 2b will be equal to zero. If we consider now the constants, we're going to have now 2a, and then it's going to be minus b is equal to seven. So if we call this one equation one and this one equation two, we can go ahead and double up equation 2. So I've got 3a plus 2b is equal to 0. And then we've got now 4a minus 2b will be equal to 14. If we do 1 plus 2, so 1 plus 2, we're going to have now 7a is equal to 14. Dividing both sides by 7a is going to be 2. And then we can simply sub that back in to find b. So from there, if I put it back into here, we can see that b would be equal now to minus 3. So a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 3. So what we've actually got now is the integral, and we can write this like so. We can write this as the integral of 2 over the quantity 2x minus 1. Then we're going to have minus 3 over the quantity 3x plus 2. Now if we look at these now, we've got the derivative in the numerator and the original function in the denominator. So what I can say now is the following. If we are integrating this now with respect to x, if I integrate 2 over 2x minus 1, I'm going to have the natural log of the modulus now of 2x minus 1. If I now integrate 3 over 3x plus 2, I'm going to have now the natural log of the modulus of 3x plus 2. If that's new to you, please check out the video before, as this now assumes that you understand that one. And then we have a constant of integration. We could, of course, just combine the logs using log laws, and we'd have the natural log of the modulus of 2x minus 1 over the quantity 3x plus 2 plus a constant. And you could even combine the constant with now the log. But this would be perfectly fine. So all I've done is split that up and use logs. In terms of your partial fractions, it's entirely up to you. I appreciate at this point I could have written, I could have said, let x be equal to minus two thirds, and then set this one to zero, and then now let x be equal to one half, set that one to zero and solve. This isn't an exercise in partial fractions, we're just looking now at one way that we could deal with this. So now we've got an exact derivative here, and we can just go ahead and integrate. If you're not spotting that, you could have written now two the natural log of the modulus of 2x minus 1 and then divide through by the derivative of the inside function and your 2s would cancel. Often people can spot that straight off, sometimes they don't, so doing this method might be helpful, especially if you have, for example, 6 over 2x minus 1. 
you could write 6 for natural log of 2x minus 1 divided by 2, which would give you 3 lots of the natural log of the modulus of 2x minus 1. So that's a nice, straightforward example of using partial fractions. OK, let's look at another one. Let's go for a different one. Let's have a look at the integral now of 2x minus 1 over the quantity now x plus 1 all squared. So if we look at this again, what we've got is the following. We've got 2x minus 1 in the numerator. Now it might be tempting to think, well, that's going to be the derivative because we're going to have an x squared term in here. But we're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1. And this isn't a multiple of that derivative. The derivative of the uh, denominator here is going to be 2x plus 2. So that is not now the derivative. So do check because it could make your life slightly easier. But essentially what we need to do here is go ahead and split this up. So what I'm going to do is use partial fractions. So I'm going to say now 2x minus 1 over the quantity x plus 1 all squared can be written now in uh, as an identity as a over x plus 1 plus now b over x plus 1 all squared. So we consider x plus 1 and x plus 1 all squared. And again, you need to be on top of your partial fractions to get your head round. Uh, well, I say get your head round it. Use this uh, to its best effect. So let's multiply through. So we're going to have 2x minus 1. And then we're going to have a. We're going to have one of the x plus 1's cancel. So we'll be left with x plus 1 and then plus b. So if we consider now terms in x, nice and straightforward, this one, we can see that a will be equal to 2. If we consider the constants, we've got now the following. We've got a, so the constants, we've got a plus b will be equal to minus 1. Therefore, b must be equal to now minus 3. So if a is 2, minus 3. So we can say now that a is 2. So a is equal to 2 and b is equal to minus 3. So all I've done is simply gone ahead and found those values. And again, you can solve these any way you like. You could set now x to be minus 1 here. Really, it's not a test on partial fractions as such. So what we're actually looking for now is the integral of, and we've got a, which is 2, so I've got 2 over now x plus 1. Then what we've got then is b, so b is going just here, and that's going to be minus 3 over now x plus 1 all squared. OK, we're integrating this with respect to x. So as you can see, it doesn't always give us a log function. This one will, and what we'll get is the natural log now. We've got two lots of the natural log, and I'll write it here, two lots of the natural log of the modulus of x plus 1. If you want to see that, I'll just write it over here. You could look at that now as two lots of 1 over x plus 1. And that just gives rise to this. Now, this one is using, essentially, recognition or reversal of the chain rule. So what I've got, I've got minus 3, and then I've got x plus 1 to the power of minus 2. So reversing the chain rule, I'm going to have minus 3. I'm going to have x plus 1. I need to raise by a power and divide by the new power. So that's what we're going to have. And, of course, dividing through by the derivative of the entire function is just going to give me 1. If you need to review that, please check out the first video when we looked at now reversing the chain rule or integration by recognition. So that's going to give me now, and I can put this in any form I want, plus 3 over now x plus 1 plus a constant. So I can see now the minus 3 and the minus 1 are going to make a positive. I can see that I can write this as 1 over the quantity x plus 1, like so. So that's one way that we could write this. So we can see this expression is in the form of a log, and this one is simply now a reciprocal. So that's another example of how this, uh, this could actually work in terms of splitting this up and making your integration quite straightforward. So always do check if the numerator is a derivative or some multiple of a derivative of the denominator. If it isn't, look to split it up. OK, let's finish with one more and we'll look at some limits on this one. Let's say we've got now the integral and we'll go from, let's go from minus 1 to 1 and we're going to have now 5 over now x squared, let's go for x squared plus x minus 6. So if we look at this now, what we've got is an integral. That quite clearly isn't the derivative of the denominator and at the moment it doesn't look like we've got something with partial fractions. 
But what we could, of course, do is factor this denominator. So what I've actually got here, and I'll write it out over here, we can write this as 5 over x plus 3 and then x minus 2. So I'm factoring now the denominator to give me this scenario here. And we can set up our identity. So we're going to have a over and then we'll have x plus 3 and then we'll have now plus b over x minus 2. So if we multiply through, what we'll have now is the following. We'll have a and then we'll have x minus 2 plus b we'll have x plus 3. So you can solve these any way you want. You can set uh, x to 2 if you want and go ahead and do that. In fact, we'll do it this way. So if we let, as I've been doing them with simultaneous equations before, let x be equal to 2. Therefore, what we're going to have here, this is going to be 0. We can see now that 5 will be equal to 5b. Therefore, b will be equal to 1. OK, if we now let x be equal to minus 3, what we're going to have then is 5 will be equal to minus 3 minus 2. So that's going to be minus 5a. And then, of course, this one will be 0. So we can see from here, a is equal to minus 1. So what we're now looking for, and I'll just write it here, we're looking for the integral, and we go from negative 1 to 1. I'm just going to write this the other way around. We've got a is minus 1, b is 1. So I'm going to write it now as 1 over the quantity x minus 2. That's b minus now 1 over the quantity x plus 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and integrate this. Now we split it up and we're going to get two expressions using logs. So what we've got now is the following. We've got the log of the modulus now of x minus 2 and then we've got minus the log of the modulus now of x plus 3. This is a definite integral and we're evaluating now from here from one, uh, negative 1 to 1. Now, at this stage, you could, of course, combine logs, and often it'll ask you to show that it can be written as a fraction. So what we're looking for here, if I've got now a difference of logs, I can write this as x minus 2 over x plus 3. OK, and we're going to evaluate that now from negative 1 to 1. So what we'll do is do that. Uh, so what we're going to have, remember, we've got the modulus here. So if I sub in 1, that's going to give me minus 1. Uh, over 4. So I can write that now as the log of a quarter as I'm taking the modulus of it. So I've got log of 1 quarter and then now what I've got here, if I sub in minus 1, I've got the log, so I'm now subtracting away, subbing in now, that's going to be minus 1 minus 2 which is going to be uh, 3 uh, and that's going to be 2. So this is now going to be the natural log of 3 over 2. So minus 1 minus 2 is going to give me minus 3. And then minus 1 plus a 3 is going to give me 2, using now the modulus of those. And we can simply go ahead now as we're subtracting these and now write this as this one divided by this one, which is going to give me the natural log of, what's that going to be, 2 over 12, which is going to be 1 over 6. So that's my answer by simply evaluating. So a, a few different examples of where we're splitting these integrals up using partial fractions to make our work simpler. So I'm assuming that you're happy with partial fractions. I've done this a couple of ways. This isn't a tutorial or lesson on doing partial fractions. And also I've assumed that you watch a video beforehand where you're able to integrate when we end up with a log function.